guys, I'm Sabrina from The Power Within and we are here today with a very special guest, Simon. And uh, we're just about to interview him and ask him a few questions about all sorts of things we want to know his view on. Um, yes, thank you so much, Simon, for being, he being here today with us. Uh, it's lovely to have you. My and um, it would be great if you just could start with a little uh, introduction about yourself and what, what you work with. And yeah, that would be great. Okay, well, um, it's, it's an interesting question to start off with. I descri describe myself as a coach, okay. but only because I need a word which encompasses what I do so that when I speak to people, they can create a picture of perhaps the sort of work and the services that I offer. Um, but for me, the, the word coach really is, is combines lots of different roles. Um, I'm a teacher at times. I feel that I'm a leader. Sometimes I'm a guide, um, sometimes I'm a friend, a compassionate listening ear, mm -hmm. sometimes I can be really challenging. Um, and I support people in really creating forward movement and clarity in whatever their particular journey is. I have a phrase that I always meet people where they are okay. and take them to where they want to go. Or at least I accompany them on that path, because clearly the path is their own and they, they're the only people who can yeah. take themselves. And I work with all kinds of people in all different walk, work, walks of life. Um, I work with executives in large companies. I work with entrepreneurs. I work with just ordinary people. Mm -hmm. not, not, that they're, not that they're not ordinary people, but yeah. you know, from any different uh, perspective or background. Um, and it's a, it's a real blessing. I really enjoy the work that I do. I really love the variety of the work that I do. Um, and I think that I focus, if I can, if I can choose my ideal client, it's really about working who are making an impact in the world. So I see a lot of what I do as, as, um, as almost leveraging what they do. Mm. So I want to see, you know, I want to see the world um, growing and evolving into a much, much more loving place. And I think that through my work and working with people have a, have a broader reach, then that's my leverage. Okay. Um, and if I work with them and they have an impact and their impact is increased, When did you start working with, with this line of work? Um, how was it for you? Was it challenging? or How, how did you come across this um, cool team? I, I love being asked those questions because it really makes me re reflect on the journey that I've been on myself. I got into coaching in about 2006 or seven, um, so it's nearly 10 years. Oh, wow. um, and I got into coaching because I found myself in a really difficult place. I had a job that I didn't enjoy. Um, I lost a lot of self-confidence um, because I wasn't really fully expressing myself. Um, it got quite dark. And what was really difficult was I didn't know how to move out of that place. Mm. And so I worked with a coach. And within, it was really just weeks or short months, a situation that I hadn't been able to change. I was able to just change completely. And it, what was incredible was the moment in which I realized that I was the person who was creating my experience. And I think that it coincided with, coincided with me following a spiritual path. That when I realized that it was me who was making the decisions, mm -hmm. um, you know, which created the experience that I was having. So it was, I realized that rather than it being an outside in experience, life was really an inside out oh, experience. Yeah. And I loved it so much, I decided that I was going to train to be a coach, and I've been doing that ever since. Oh, great. That's great. Um, so, you're a spiritual person, and do you believe in God? We always like to ask our guests so if they believe in God, and what does God, what God means to them. Sure, and if you'd asked me that question, you know, ten years or so ago, I would have said absolutely not. Oh, wow. Um, no, absolutely, I would have been, because there would have been a fear around. And I think that's because of, of my definition of God then was something that had been, I suppose, imposed on me or taught to me through the school and my upbringing. Mm. Um, and I would absolutely have said no. But what, what I believe God to be is a, this life force. Mm. And, um, and with, the, with the freedom to choose my own definition, then yeah, absolutely, I believe in God. Mm, um, you know, I, 
believe in spirit. I believe in, in, a, in, a, in this beautiful energy in which we all sit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in what about um, religion and spirituality? Would you consider yourself a religious person or a spiritual person? Or what would you well, I'd say I would say certainly spiritual, but not religious. And I think um, you know religion has is is really going through a very interesting period for me, in the sense that you know all religions at the heart of them have, have just deep spiritual really beliefs and practices. Mm -hmm. But what seems to happen is they get within, I don't know, they, they get caught up within the ego, the ego-driven ego mind, yeah. money, you know, many of the negative aspects of, of our human experience. Mm. And they get really confused about what their original values, you know, the original values, the founding values of these religions. Um, and they now get a very bad press as far as I can see. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, I, when, when I said I would never have said that I, I believed in God 10, years ago, I think it was that, it was a, it was a re reaction or rejection of um, sort of organised religion. But I think that, that have, having practices, having beliefs, um, to me that what I love is my spiritual freedom. Mm. And I love to, to choose the things that I believe, I love to choose the things that I'm feeling or, or the connections that I'm experiencing. I read different literature, I speak to different people. I'm very eclectic. I take different mm, ideas mm -hmm. and the things that resonate with yeah. me. And I think that for me, if there's a religion which um, has, has a sort of dogma or a set of rules to be followed, that's when I start to feel really uncomfortable. Mm, because to me, that's the antithesis of the spiritual belief that we have to we have to worship in a particular way. For me, um, I I love to em embody. Experiment because that's the kind of person that I, I'm incredibly mm -hmm. curious. I'm very adventurous, and I like to experience all aspects of okay. of religion, religious views, you know, and spiritual practices. Okay, so so you would classify yourself more of a, a spiritual person rather than religious. Mm -hmm. And there is all this hoo ha about spirituality now, and and we love to to ask everyone. <coughs> What does the spirituality mean to you then? What the word spiritual means to you? Yeah, and so I'm, you know, am I a spiritual person? Possibly not explicitly. I, know I, I was saying earlier, I, I work with a broad range of people, mm. and I don't necessarily present myself as a spiritual coach. Yeah. But I think that when people work with me, what they will do is they'll experience me. Um, and they will experience my spiritual belief and my spiritual practices. Um, to me, it's an energetic exchange. We're becoming one another. You know, we're in one another's field. It, it, it's so I, I don't. I'm not necessarily explicitly spiritual. It doesn't say on my yeah. website spiritual coach, but it's an absolutely fundamental part of who I am. And therefore, I think that when people work with me, you know, intuitively they're drawn to me um, because they're looking for something. People often describe me as being a very grounding presence, or a very grounded presence, mm -hmm. or a very calming presence, um, and I think that that's what people are drawn to, and that comes from I think from my spiritual practices. Okay. Um, but it's you know you talk about all this hoo ha about spirituality, and again I don't criticise people for having their own perspectives, uh -huh. but when sp when spirituality becomes, it starts to take on all of the other kind of ego based. You know who knows more about things than, oh, than yeah. this person, and who you know who's been on more courses or had more rebirths or whatever it might be. When it becomes almost like competitive, it feels to me that what we've done is we've taken something which is quite pure and, and has no um, has, has no um, no restrictions. We've created it. It's almost like a hierarchy, and we've, we've imposed our own dogmas around it. And to me, that that um, you know, I think it can put people off. Yeah. I think it's not inclusive. Um. No, definitely. I definitely agree with that. Um, another thing that we like to you know, explore with uh, the power within us is uh, this talk about the Ascension movement and what it is and, and what it means to everyone. So are you, are you familiar with it? Do you believe in, in a sort of a energy rising all over the globe uh, such as a movement of Ascension? So again, you know, you can read lots about what the Ascension Movement is. My own personal experience is, yes, I think there is a, a, 
a, a, a rising, a spiritual energy rising on the planet. I don't know if that's predestined, I don't know where that's coming from, but mm. certainly my experience, um, you know, and, and the people I connect with, and I become more and more, more and more conscious of the fact that there is there is a shift in energy around this planet, mm. you know, a, a, a rising level of consciousness of people. Um, and for a while I believed that I wanted to be part of, of creating that, leading that in a sense, um, you know, being a light worker. But I know, you know, to me, what feels comfortable is to, to be me, to be grounded, to be connected, to come from my heart, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and be that beacon rather than needing then to go out and, and evangelize or, or to draw mm -hmm. other people into a movement. You know, as I said, if, if through my coaching people feel a greater connection, not with just what it is that they're trying to achieve in their own lives, but actually an understanding of what's happening in broader perspective, so if you don't believe in something greater than themselves, if they can connect into that, then I think that's incredibly powerful. But that has to be their choice, it has to, be, it has to come from their own will. Sure, mm. sure. Um, it's nearly like helping them to find their soul mission, which is our next question. Um, basically, I like to ask everyone if they, they believe that every human being has you know, their life purpose that they're meant to connect to. A certain point in their lives, and is, is that something you you agree to? You believe in that as well? Well, for me, the word purpose and through coaching, I know that when people have a purpose when they believe in something, then it creates incredible results. It's when people have a clear sense of purpose and commit commit to that sense of purpose, then it can just create magic and wonder mm. and changes change their whole perspective, and it starts to have that ripple effect that I talked about. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> whether that purpose is preordained, whether that purpose is something that we're here to connect with as part of our purpose, so our purpose is to connect with our purpose, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know. I don't really have a strong view yeah. on that. But I do know the power of purpose. Um, and so, you know, to me, if you ask me what my purpose was, I could talk in terms of my purpose yeah. as a coach, um, or I could talk in terms of my purpose as a, as a spiritual being. Mm -hmm. And it might not be the same thing. Yeah. But I think that the, the, the two support one another, and they become they become different facets of who I am. Mm -hmm. you know, that's the, you know that's the wonderful paradox of being human. Yeah. Uh, is that we you know we live in this world, but are we of this world? Um, you know, I have, a, I have a really sort of strong belief. I've been looking at the Course of Miracles recently. The Course of Miracles, and what comes up there is the fact that everything within this world is just a creation. Mm. It's just a creation of the ego. It's a projection of the ego. Because by projecting our world, it confirms the existence of the ego. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it keeps us in separation from God. And so you might argue that, that purpose, having a purpose, actually keeps us in separation from God. Mm. But how about when that purpose is in line with your soul mission and your God-led so mission? I, and see, I don't necessarily agree that okay. we have a soul purpose okay. or a God-led mission. Well, because if... if if I have a God-led mission, at that point I'm now talking about duality mm -hmm. because there's God and, and I'm being led. So we're now in a state of duality. Mm -hmm. well, you know, I'm not sure if I want to believe in this, okay. this dualistic universe. You know, to me, what feels feels interesting is, and I said to you before, I'm very eclectic. What's, yeah. what's drawing my interest at the moment is the idea that actually everything that, that we experience is just an illusion. Yeah. There is only one God, and we and we are. Um, we are all within that, mm -hmm. and, and so they can't. You can't have this dualistic God and me, and my purpose mm -hmm. God given. Because at that point we're into dualism, and I really, I'm really intrigued by this whole kind of concept of having a non-dualistic, non-dualistic yeah. existence, which is actually well, if I if I let go of um, the belief that I'm here with a purpose, then that actually brings me closer to God in some respects, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm exploring and playing with at okay. the moment. Interesting. Um, so, in terms of um, your line of work, you work with coaching. We are now down to our last question. So, it's been great having you here, Simon. Um, and this is a question I love to ask everyone. What was the most amazing experience or the darkest experience you ever 
had a spirituality in relation to spirituality and would you like to share that with us um okay so i think that having made the decision to um i suppose i suppose to um i said to take ownership of my life i guess i'm talking about choosing how i want you know to, to, to create the path through my life um so waking up to the fact that i have um if you like almost like that conscious veto so there's a, so i am now aware of my thinking in a far deeper way than i ever was before mm. and i get to choose how i want to respond to that thinking in the sense that i realize that thinking is just it's just a, a, a construct and so how i want to to as i said if i want to project that into into this reality and create the reality that i step into then i want to be more, much more mindful about the choices that i'm making mm. so there's this gap between the thought coming up and possibly how i respond to that thought um and that has given me a lot of opportunity it's given me choice it's given me also a huge amount of responsibility because to me being responsible is our ability to being able to respond response mm-hmm. ability and so having made that choice to to choose a different path from perhaps the path that has been my default for so many years that has just caused me at times a lot of anxiety that's caused me a lot of of discomfort mm. um because it's a challenge because there's a, there's a huge part of me that wants to take the easy path wants to take the path of least resistance wants to take the path which takes me into an unconscious type of, of experience or there's that part of me that sort of that's, that's perhaps is driven through my higher self um which requires of me to make better choices to make more inspired choices um and that to me has been a really at times a really difficult and dark path um it's you know at times it's it's caused me a lot of self doubt and questioning mm-hmm. um and i think actually when we talk about the work that i do as a coach that's where the real power of the work that i do comes up is when people start to realize that they have the responsibility to make the choices in their lives that it's them that's creating their experiences and if i can sit with them and hold a space for them and believe in them and create if you like the opportunity for them to step into because the action always has to come from them the desire what always has to come from the individual but if i if, if you like with them can co-create a container in which they step into creating a bigger life for themselves then they're able that at that point to start on a spiritual path whether they do it they do it from the perspective of of you know what I would say an explicit choice or mm-hmm. just if it's just following that path realizing that it's them that's creating their experience um it's magical it's a real moment of awakening yeah and that's when i really get excited well thank you so much simon for having us here in your home it's been a really great pleasure to interview you and um yes thank you so much thank you for coming